Now, G2 versus T1 is the second semi-final of the Mid-Season Invitational for 2022. T1, as I talked about in the betting segment, are a large, large favourite. They are heavily expected to win this. Certainly, yes, they would have been a way bigger favourite against EG. Maybe G2 could have beaten RNG. I think I still would have sided with RNG. I think they just know how to close the game out better. But the problem is, not only is T1 a favourite... They have better players overall, man for man, than the players on G2. They have a better team as a five-man unit than G2. They have a, a team that, listen, even though some of them are rookies in my sense, that they've only played like a year or so, or they shared roles with someone in past years, they have more experience than the G2 players collectively in the sense that they're complete rookies from this split in the G2 bot lane, for example. Broken Blade played for lesser teams, not a team of the status of G2 in terms of the expectation that you should maybe be able to win a series like this. And he's had his issues at this tournament, I thought, despite what he did in the LEC, where he looked monstrous in the playoffs in the last few series. Jan Kors is just, at this point in his career, not the type of jungler who even picks or tries to sort of hard 1v9. He's not going to do some Tarzan-type shit in that sense. But there is one factor... And it's a historical factor that can be resurrected now that does play for G2. And it is, of course, Caps. Because here's the thing. Caps is not just a Western superstar. He is the Western superstar. And he is on another level than even the other Western superstars. Particularly because of his style of play and his strengths. It's not just who he is as a player. Like, think about this. When he has a pop-off, he has the hardest pop-offs. And some of his best pop-offs are international competition against top teams in the world. They're not just against the bad team in the LEC where you just get to look great. His peak level, nobody has ever reached that level, in my opinion, in any role in the West that Caps has overall. We're talking about absolute level, even relative level. Like, obviously, in theory, you can say Froggen was the best player in the world in Season 2. If you don't know that, by the way, if you think that's hyperbole, you just don't know League of Legends. You have no idea what he did in Korea. You have no idea what he did in the West. You don't know that the Koreans weren't the overall absolute best at the top of every role, such as ADC, they didn't even have the top two players in the world, but you just don't know that. Fine though, write your stupid comments in the in the comment section, send stupid tweets, make Reddit threads as usual. You are like a moron street team for me, You're getting the word out there that I'm wrong. Then people see my content, it's fire, and they go, wow, he is great, you're a moron. And then the world is as it should be, of course, but you've burned a few calories getting my name out there. Now, Caps has burned more than a few calories getting his name out there. Justifiably, he has been a monster. Beyond even the pop-offs, the level of play, how about the playmaking, the things he could do inside of a game, the edges he can find, the, the gaps that you didn't even think were gaps. Maybe they weren't gaps. Maybe he just forced his way through. He really seems like one of those guys where it's like it, it, through the power of his mind, he can just run through walls or something and they just disappear for one second and he just appears on the other side. It's, it's someone where once you've watched him play long enough, when he's on top of his game... It's like if you watch Simple in CSGO, it's not as good relative, but it's, you think anything's possible. You never think, well, they're out of this, so I think you do that, man. that should be really hard. You just know, like, well, let's just see if he can do it. Let's see if he's zoned in. If he is, it'll happen. It just will. You've seen it happen too many times. You start to feel like the impossible becomes probable rather than improbable. His vision to make these plays, that's probably the most special thing about him. There's people who have amazing skills, they don't have the vision for it. People like the obvious ones would be like reckless. You could maybe even throw my boy Frogger in there. They're not even trying to look for some of these angles or trying to take these big gambles. Caps, he, it's not even that he's looking for them. He just sees them. And when he sees them, he has the confidence to go in and get them. And that's the thing. There are tons of Western stars. I even thought for a lot of his career, Perks suffered from confidence issues in this sense or imposter syndrome when he got to the top, top level. And oh, is it supposed to work out for me? I don't feel like Caps has ever had that. He's had years where he wasn't that good. Like season seven, I thought he was dodgy. Even season eight, he actually entered a few of the games on the way up to the final. It doesn't matter though, because it, it, it's like the same mentality that makes him in and play overly, you could say selfishly, or play in a manner where you're willing to gamble the whole game is also what made him a monster on the other side. And by testing that out over the years, he shored up some of the weaknesses. Might have gone too far this spring, obviously. And it's allowed him to keep the peak level without losing most of the weaknesses. Spoiler, that's how the Michael Jordans of the world become the greatest players. It isn't from the initial skill set or initially what they dominate with. It's when you build in the counters and take away the weaknesses. And then suddenly your strengths, without anything to offset them, become even more and more valuable and maximally affect the scene and your particular player and career. Now, this is not, right now, the Caps of the Spring Split. So the Caps of the Spring Split before the playoffs turns up. I don't care what anyone cares about trying to retcon the last few... Ah, oh, I thought even the last few weeks we could even shit. Nah, you didn't. Shut the fuck up. You never made the content. It would have been an easy pop-off on YouTube. You didn't make it. You're full of shit. <laughs> right. 
That guy, if he turns up, there's nothing happening here. This is just going to be an easy series. He'll probably be fine in lane. It won't matter. You'll lose the games convincingly. Probably lose 3-0. Maybe have one game if T1 throws a Baron or just something silly like that. Aside from that, you expect them to just win, don't you? I do think, though, if the caps of the like last three low bracket series, it'll include the final there, from LEC, or the caps of the old G2s turn up, then a lot is possible right now. Not in terms of winning, but in terms of given the moment where T1 has to pause and take a breath in a fight. They have to think, fuck, that was almost went the other way. Man, he's doing it. What what the hell's going on here? And they have to think second in draft and they have to do something else and he can flex them. That's where it starts to get interesting if that Caps turns up because that Caps can win this series. That Caps can be better than Faker. That Caps can be the best player in this series even if they win. That Caps is the one I want to see. That guy is special. I've seen all the great Western players and mid laners I've seen Froggen, I've seen Febovan when he was a very exciting youngster with great skills. I've seen Perks when he became, I mean, only a few years into his career, just an all-around player who had a level of mastery of understanding the game. I've seen Expec here with the, the heights that he could go to, the crazy mechanical players he would go for, the nonchalance about even trying those crazy-ass players. I've seen Jensen, who I think was probably in the latter years, Internationally, he was far superior to Bjergsen. Probably the best sort of mage player out of the Western teams at Worlds, I always thought, overall. I know, obviously, Caps had his Oriana for a while. Bjergsen, like, look, he never really done it internationally, generally, for me, but he was obviously a strong player for many years. Started out as the sort of assassin-type player, but very much more went back to the bread and butter of the Syndra that initially got known for. He was more of a mage player. Just a very good player. And then, then playing those niche off-colour picks. Huh? Then we obviously have this, though. Of those names, one does stand out. If you want to talk about the chance to be a top Korean team, top West Asian team, do something you shouldn't be able to do as a Westerner, expect is the name you go to. I always thought he would be the ultimate example ever of the flashy player with some clutch gene in him. Not always. Spoiler, go look against White's uh, and Royal Club at season three semis. But besides that, there are plenty of occasions where he was clutch, where he was a guy who was willing to gamble, where he was willing to take a punch to give a punch. And he absolutely did punch fucking Koreans on their nose and make them think twice about what they were doing, trying to just stomp a European slash his team fanatic or origin. Wasn't so much in origin, obviously. But that's the thing. I thought I'd never see a player like Xpeke because no one else ever had the same confidence, ever seemed like they were unshakable like he did. This guy supersedes Xpeke in all regards. He has the ultimate example of the break the matrix mentality, where if something's going wrong, if everything seems like it's against you, it shouldn't be possible. No one else even believes it's possible. The enemy's supremely confident. They've got everything they want. They just know that they're going to beat you. It doesn't matter. Your mind becomes the impregnable fortress. You cannot be beaten. And so fate has nothing to do but melt away in the face of your sheer will to win because when this guy gets his picks this is what I was talking about also guys when it was like the first series they lost to Fnatic in those LEC playoffs that wasn't Caps and he wasn't even picking Caps champions and miss me telling me that was the meta it wasn't I watch LPL they play the best champions there my boy Knight can pop off on the silence anytime he likes because if you put a Silas or a LeBlanc or at times in the past a Nikali onto Caps this guy can do incredible things sometimes he can be better than the best korean mid laners and that shouldn't even be possible if you understand that it's the most important role in history the most important region and that is where the world champions in theory are crafted from those korean mid laners so you think in the past of the examples of when he did it when he did it against t1 at 2019 msi in the semi-finals when he actually took care of gen g the second best team in korea at the quarterfinals of 2020 worlds there's many other occasions as well but these were the ones where he just stood out as like man he's actually even better than Faker. He's even better than fucking BDD. These are the guys with all the MVPs and the LCK, you know, and all the championships. Like, this is this is crazy, crazy shit, guys. These guys weren't rookies at all. They were deep in their careers at this point in time. By the way, as Caps himself now is, think how long he's been this good now. 2018, guys, the years he really came online as like a true superstar player. Guys, that was four years ago. And he's only had, what, like half a, it's, let's say a whole year off, because we'll take like Part of this spring split now, and then maybe part of the spring split in 2020. Aside from that, what a monster career. What an unbelievable player this guy is. So I think to myself, when he plays against T1 and maybe against RNG, if he plays them in the final somehow, when he plays against Faker and Perk and Zhaohu, they are for me, that's why I said Perk's that. They, they're reminding me more of a perk style mid lane in our wits. Well, don't take too many risks because what you can do for the rest of your team gets them ahead and you win the game if you understand how to win and you're in a position with enough pieces. This guy's still on the old faker 
the old, I mean, rookie and night stairs. It's like, I'm just trying to smash, bro. I'm just trying to be the absolute best individual player. I'm in monster form. You can't stop me. And my team will figure out around me how to win this game because I'm the unstoppable force. Remember, mid lane is the most important role in the game and probably always will be. Once you've got the mid laner, the better mid laner, the mid laner with the confidence who can go for the solo kills, can push in the lane, can roam. Now your jungle and support, they can do a lot. And with his jungle and support, he has a mega veteran jungle, one of the greatest of all time, maybe the greatest jungler ever to play League of Legends. And his support is a very, very good European rookie, probably the best of the European rookies, who in, outside of lane looks phenomenal already and has real growth ahead of him. So I, I'm very interested to see what could happen with some of these roams and how that could enable the caps that can if he indeed turns up. I think that's really exciting to imagine. Now, let's not get it twisted. Ona has been a monster for T1. Kerry is the best player in the whole world. So probably not going to win the series. Here's the cool thing. Most stars, most in all esports, play a little bit worse at the World Championship in the biggest games with the most pressure. It's a rare breed who don't. I've met a few who haven't, and they really do impress me so much, the Stefanos of the world. The ones that somehow don't get affected by the pressure... It's, it feels like it should be impossible, but these guys are incredible. The thing is, people who are fans never stop and think. You're even comparing how they play to when you play the game for fun in solo queue. Think about this. Imagine if I said, right, I want you to play League of Legends in front of the world. So already you're going to look silly if you do badly. By the way, it's not on your PC. You have to set up the PC. You get about 20 minutes to set it up so it feels like your PC at home. Spoiler, it never will. But you've got to go as far as you can and then forget it and believe in your heart of hearts. It just is and your mouse sensitivity isn't off and that everything was correct in the settings and that doesn't matter that the height side it doesn't matter you just got to play now and then you're on stage you're on this big weird thing you're looking around this isn't what it's like to play normally at home even the feeling of there's no walls and closing you this feels different and then i've got a crowd thousands of people rah, rah, cheer at the other game. Rah, rah. they expect to be entertained and you know what you know at home there's millions watching as well your family's watching everyone at home who said you're shitting overrated is watching everyone who said you're the best and you're definitely going to win and you're going to do them go do them proud in this game they're all watching too all these factors are at play and then you play the game and are supposed to play free without any pressure just make the creative players listen to your soul speak to the game the language of the game itself Caps can do that very few other people can do it now Faker can do it as well but he's in sort of a different phase of his career right now although even so I expect at least one game he has a massive pop off and he, re he reminds people who Faker is by the way so the thing for me is since I'm talking about the great Faker and I'm talking about the chance of this monster knockout punch from a great Western superstar in Caps. How about the Game of Sups flavour, Dragon Fruit Punch, which I always thought was delicious. Use the code Thorin, T-H-O-R-I-N, for 10% off at GamerSups.gg. By the way, that could even be a pretty cool side nickname for Faker, couldn't it? And same, in like Wheel of Time sense, the dragon. He is just the one who just shaped the whole world. He's basically uh, been one of the major factors in everything that's happened in League of Legends. And is the most influential individual to ever appear in the scene, arguably in all of esports. What's cool about this battle as well is it is a tra traditional East versus West stereotype battle where... You have the geniuses who came up through their system and then they had the Korean work ethic and uh, not work ethic, the Korean uh, practice mode imposed upon them and how you practice iteration, flowchart thinking, basically a knowledge base and you access it all the time and you make it refinement and try and do it as perfectly as possible and then within that you make your calls like Faker does and you try to do what you can or you have the western approach of this raw individualism this wild in theory creativity because nothing is is taken away from you no coach tells you, you can't do this you do what you want and from within that you, you're trying to create a different kind of artistic vision as opposed to maybe you could think of it as like genius level engineering I think for some of the Koreans when they play it's always been the perfect against the unpredictable and the question is in the long run yes the perfect wins but the unpredictable has its chance every dog has its day right so you think of some of the great western players in different esports games stefano he just could not be rattled under pressure even against the best koreans nanawa had the most insane skill level and did have the real hours in the trenches in korea to be able to battle these the koreans in monster macro games so as a genius can one trick anything he wants play unusual lanes 
out. It doesn't even matter if he dies in lane. His understanding of the map and what he's going to do with map pressure is absurd. Expecte is the guy. It's put me in the game, coach. Give me the ball. I'm going for the shot. Win or lose. And I'll take us there if I can. Hiller, Sang and Mickey X, I always thought were players that could really put the fear of God into the Korean teams and make them realise you have amazing support players. Sometimes you're still travel, draw within the lines. Hiller, Sang and Mickey X don't, mate. Especially not Hiller, Sang. So you better watch out for that. To me, Caps is the raw skill of a Nanawa, but with the surety of a Stefano and then the unpredictable element of a Soaz. Like, what can you even do against a guy like that? Like, there's almost a, a way where when they beat you up like that, you almost just admire it. Like, I don't even really know how he did it. So hats off, right? The Korean beats you, you go, yeah, you're just much better than me. Respect for that. Hats off to you as well. It's a different type of vibe. So in the long run, the perfect does win out over the unpredictable. But the legacy here is a really cool angle because this is a free roll for Caps. It's, it's totally fine for G2 to lose. They should lose. The other players in the team, absolutely they should lose. There's no reason they shouldn't. But Caps has a chance, even in a loss, to show something extra special in his career, even beyond what he's done before. This is a chance for him to kind of show again why he's one of the greatest players ever, even if he loses. I actually think, by the way, this will even, if he does it and comes anywhere close to the upset, it will unfairly have the other EU teams, just like it did for Fnatic Season 8 and G2 Season 9 and all the regions. About, hey, it isn't your fucking idiot. The second team does nothing like that because guess what? They ain't got prime caps. They ain't got the caps that can. Humanoid sweet as fuck in the LEC. Take him international. You've never done it like this, caps, because this is the caps that can. Hey, this is Mithy and you're watching Thorin's YouTube channel. This video was kindly supported by Ahmed Haju, Matt Pagnaccio Rakula, Kyle R, Pacey, Travis Goff, Adam Oaks, Animosity, Bot Pounder 420, Hades, Jensen Gore, Joseph Ginsburg, Kovacevic, Tobias Berlusconi, Tukan, Zumba, Xyrathenia, and a special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to find out who upcoming guests are going to be? Maybe even suggest them on the topic for my content. Maybe you want to appear in one of those lengthy esports discussions with me or ask me a question for my video AMA. Well, if these perks or indeed any of the others available intrigue you, then join the Skrilluminati today. Put the money where your mouth is. Where? In the description box below and the Patreon link.